It's a new day, the new patches come out, and you're probably wondering, are the new planes worth grinding for? In front of me, I have the J8F, the new top tier for the Chinese tech tree. And in short, yes, I do think this plane is worth grinding out. I mean, if you're only interested in the most meta top tier aircraft, then I guess this isn't for you. But the combination of attributes that this plane has makes it one of the most fun planes that I've played in a while. So what does this plane have going for it? Well, outside of being an extra long boy, just like every top tier nowadays, it's the armament and the avionics that make and break the plane. It gets 6 PL-8s, which is just another name for the Python 3, which is quite honestly an absurd missile. I mean, it has the acceleration and burn time of a PL-5, the range of an AIM-9L, and 40 Gs of pull. It quite honestly easily makes it the best infrared missile in the game. On top of that, one thing that it gets over every Israeli plane that just got pythons is that it has a helmet mounted display, which lets you aim the seeker around without pointing your plane. It'll literally just slave to wherever you're looking or wherever your mouse is pointed. And when you have a missile with infinite energy and 40 Gs of pull, oh boy do people not see this thing coming. One of my favorite tactics to do right now is just to sit on the deck, and if anybody gets within my 5km death bubble, as long as they aren't flying directly away from me, you just use the helmet to look in their general direction, lock them up, and they don't even realize that a missile has been launched at them. And with the big rudder and the bottom side fin of the J8, I like to call this my shark tactics. You come down from the depths just to snatch people up in seconds without them realizing it. Especially with how short the burn time on this missile is, the missile warning diamond goes away once the burner's out, and any reduction in spatial awareness that I can force upon the enemy is always going to be good. Take this F4J for example. Dude has literally no clue that I launched a missile at him, and I never pointed my plane at him either. The only reason that it doesn't hit is because he had to flare somebody else's missile, and mine happened to miss because of it. And with how fast it turns in, and how fast the acceleration is, you can also just point blank people like that MiG-23. I honestly probably could have even launched at that Mirage 2000 and it still would have hit. I just can't stress how fun it is to have a missile that does everything good. And when you compare this to the most meta IR missile last patch, which was the AIM-9L, the Python 3 just does literally everything that matters better. It has just as much range on a shorter burn time, it accelerates really hard, and it pulls harder than any other infrared missile in the game. One thing that this plane is missing from its kit is just a viable radar missile, or really any radar missile for that matter. Despite having a modernized radar, they actually removed semi-active radar homing capabilities from it, so uh, you're restricted to an only infrared loadout which isn't necessarily the most meta loadout right now, but considering you have six of the best infrared missile in the game, I can let it slide. I mean, come on, it has a pulse doppler radar now and you take away the radar missile? I know it's historical, but I miss having the speed that the J8B has. Outside of your missiles, you have a GSH-23 for a gun, which in today's day and age is a pretty sad gun to have. It has no velocity to speak of, but because of real shatter and all of its downfalls, the gun also does no damage now. Have fun trying to get any gun kills in this thing, and Gaijin please fix real shatter. Hitting a dude with like 4 23mm rounds to the wing should honestly tear that wing straight off. With the new patch being here, everybody is coming out in force in their F14A Tomcats, or stock grinding their F14B Tomcats which means that there is an unnecessary number of Phoenix missiles in the air today. Unlike most other radar missiles, you can't just simply drag this thing into the ground. You also have to dodge it just a little bit. It has so much explosive mass that even when it hits the ground, if you are not actively avoiding it, it can still hit you with the splash damage. I mean, this thing has more explosive filler than battleship shells. Remember, this missile was intended to kill swarms of Soviet bombers. Which means that, on top of just sticking low to the deck, you also will probably have to swing a wide turn, because the Phoenix only has 17G of pull. It's not going to be able to lead you and follow your turn at the same time, and get close enough to splash damage you. 
Right now, the high altitudes can basically only be occupied by F-14, F-16s, and anything with the R-27ER. If you ever do get the opportunity to climb in this plane, though, the Python becomes infinitely better. It has reduced drag at the high altitudes, and shooting it down at people means gravity is working in your favor. And by all means, climbing is not hard with the engines that it has. They basically took a MiG-21 and doubled it and gave it to the next person. Seeing as you have what's basically the equivalent of two MiG-21 SMT engines behind you. And this plane can even super cruise with a full missile loadout, which is really cool and a thing that not a lot of planes can do. Just keep in mind, this thing still basically just is a MiG-21. You know, the same airframe that we've been using since 9.3. This one just happens to be a little bit longer, but overall the playstyle is still very similar to a MiG-21 in terms of how you're just constantly bleeding speed in turns. But hey, at least you do still get that good Delta AOA. The unfortunate part about this though is that it gets the low rip speed on the deck as well which isn't preferable considering you have like unlimited thrust. This means that the plane rips at 1365 IAS kilometers per hour. I don't know what that is in miles per hour or god forbid you're using knots, but it's always good to have an awareness of how fast you're going in a plane like this where you can quite easily reach your rip speed in a straight line. Also, remember what I said earlier about pythons at altitude? Yeah, just take a look at this clip and you'll see how insane they are. Yeah, that was an F-16 5 kilometers above me, and probably going somewhere in the ballpark of Mach 1.3. Keep in mind, the Python was directly fighting against gravity for that shot. If that doesn't convey to you how insane this missile is, I don't know what will. Also, completely unrelated to the background footage, but there's been a lot of ghost missiles happening lately. You will probably have a moment where you die to a missile that was completely invisible and silent. Let's try not and use it to justify skill issues, but there will be moments where you just die to something you can't avoid. So what are the takeaways from this plane? It has good missiles, it has good engines, it has good avionics, the only thing that's kind of lacking is the gun and the dogfight performance, and even then it still has skills you can use to win a dogfight. Overall, I think this plane has something for everyone to enjoy. Whether that's the goofy -aw missiles or the goofy -aw airframe, the F-14B might be the king of top tier now, but the JAF is definitely one of the biggest winners in my book. That's all for this video, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye